He's appeared in nine games last season, completing 62.7% of passes. And as you can see here, he's definitely a rushing quarterback. He, rushed, he passed for 1,435 yards and had 12 touchdowns. And actually, as a matter of fact, Nick rushed for his career high 110 yards against this same South Carolina State team last year while throwing for 157. And the offensive threat for South Carolina is going to be Will Vereen, wide receiver for the Bulldogs. Will Vereen actually right now has 319 yards on the receipt on the season with 20 catches. And, you know, 5'11", definitely a deep threat, works great off of screens, and right now averaging about 16 yards per play. And we will be back for kickoff here on the MEAC Football on ESPN. University. Welcome back live from Daytona Stadium here. Nick Gimble alongside Chance Thyssen filling in for Larry Wesley, who fell under the weather tonight, unfortunately could not be with us. Chance, thanks so much for being here this afternoon. Of course, man. Glad to be here. Mr. Wesley, I wish you the best, and uh, I hope I do you proud. Bethune-Cookman won the coin toss. They have deferred, so it will be South Carolina ball to receive once kickoff is underway, once the band has exited the field and the stage is set. In typical Florida fashion, it was a beautiful sunny morning. We had a good amount of rain happen in the past hour and a half or so. Skies cleared up, rain back again, and now it's a little bit overcast, under the lights, a little bit of sunshine. What do you expect from the turf field tonight? I, uh, I expect a lot of, you know, hard playing, you know, great, great effort from both teams. Obviously going to be a little bit slippery. Hope to see the best from our two, uh, our two spotlight stars tonight out of uh, uh, Wolverine and, um, and Akibius Williams. And unfortunately, as we just got told, Wolverine will not be in action tonight. He did suffer an injury. Don't know the extent of that, but he will not be playing. Wolverine will not so Traquan DuBose will be replacing that South Carolina wide receiver. For sure. Traquan DuBose is uh, definitely, definitely a great, great, you know, coming in player. He, uh, believe he is, believe he has got um, definitely a deep threat. Going to be, going to be a, going to be a great player for them replacing him. And Tyrese Nick, six foot, 170 pound junior quarterback, for South Carolina will enter the field after kickoff from Bethune Cookman that will come from Xavier McDonald. Bethune Cookman in their home golden uniforms with the maroon and white trim will be kicking off in a right to left direction across the field. Back to receive is number seven, Juwan Moody. Kick is underway, and here we go from Daytona Stadium. Fair catch is called. And South Carolina State will have the ball at around the seven-yard line. And let's take a look at the starting lineup of the offense of the South Carolina State Bulldogs. So we got starting a quarterback, Tyrese Nick, definitely a great quarterback. Gonna looking for him to produce today. Gets a strong Bethune Cookman defense. Then we have obviously Wolverine, who is not playing today, and uh, Traquan. Dubo will be replacing him, and, you know, we're hoping for a great game and definitely going to see how it goes. So we'll come out to the 25-yard line, pump fake, going deep right on the first play, and it's deflected up in the air, and it will go incomplete. And Corey Fields is the starting quarterback for South Carolina, so a correction on that. He took that shotgun snap and went downfield for Demontrez Burroughs. And it will be second down and 10 on that completion again from the 25-yard line in Bulldog territory. 
Bulldogs in their road uniforms as a handoff comes, and it will be a short gain of just about two yards. And they're actually going to spot them at about the 28. We'll bring up third down and seven. Great defense by Bethune there. Off defensive line, filled their gaps, did everything they were supposed to, and got the stoppage on the run. Third down and seven for South Carolina. Shotgun snap, looking to his right, and it is complete. It's going to be a first down and more for South Carolina. That was number 12, Shaquan Davis, on the first big pickup of the afternoon for South Carolina. Brings up a fresh set of downs. And an extra 15-yard penalty tacked on to the end of that play as well. After the penalty, they've got, you know, some great – they've obviously got great field position right now sitting, I believe, at about the 41. You know, they've been running out of the shotgun position for the – you know, obviously since they started. And it is uh, definitely looking, looking great for them right now. So we're hoping, you know, Bethune defense steps up. Have a handoff right here, a little bit of an option. 24 gets the ball, breaks loose, and down at the, I believe the 40, where are we? I, I can't. Uh, Omar Cummings was the running back who got that shovel pass, and it is going to be second down and about three from the Bethune-Cookman 32-yard line. Corey Fields again set up. And they are going to call a false start, I believe. Now the referees having a discussion with each other. Jason Soisman, the referee for this afternoon's matchup. And that will bring up second down and eight after that false start penalty to the Bulldogs. Now Tyrese Nick in at quarterback. He'll hang on to it himself. Here comes Nick down that right sideline and forced out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. First down for the Bulldogs and getting into dangerous territory. This is big for South Carolina to get some early momentum. It is homecoming week and a sold-out crowd here at Daytona Stadium, the home of the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. The, not, bull, the Bulldogs threatening here. Not only is it homecoming, we're there, both of these teams are fighting for a spot in the Celebration Bowl and definitely going to be some great competition here. Nick holds on to it for a five-yard gain on first down, and there was that slippery turf in action. You saw Nick's right foot slide out from under him. He may have picked up an extra yard and a half or so. He slipped on that run to the left, and now... Directly from the 20-yard line, we will have second down and five. Tyrese Nick under center, handoff, and it will be about third down and one. Did not look like LeBron Morris made it to the first down mark. Brings up third down and one. In scoring territory, South Carolina is. They have a chance for a field goal if this fails. And the handoff again, and snuffed out by Bethune-Cookman, and it will be for no gain, brings up fourth down. And chance this early in the game, are you seeing four down territory, or are you going for the field goal? Honestly, at this point in the game, it's real early. I say you take your field goal. You take your three points up on the board because obviously Bethune has a great defense. They've been filling their gaps, doing everything they possibly can to stuff the run. But as we can see, they're going for it, trying to get them off sides there. May call a timeout, may audible. You never know. We'll see what happens. Tyrese Nick in the shotgun. Fourth and one for the Bulldogs. Nick hangs on to it himself, and I believe he does get to that first down marker by just enough. Bethune-Cookman defense thinks they've stopped him. And 
We'll have to see an official spot from the officials on the field. And this is going to be a close one. Regardless of if it's first down or fourth down, and we get a replay here of it, if it's first down, great scoring chance for South Carolina, but good job by the offense of South Carolina to put Bethune-Cookman in an awkward situation. And it is short by just a couple of blades of grass. Bethune-Cookman will have the ball on a turnover on downs from about their own 15-yard line. So the Bethune-Cookman defense does their job, will bring out the offense, Akevius Williams and Jimmy Robinson, the two powerhouse players for the offense of Bethune-Cookman, will come out onto the field. Really excited to see Akevius Williams play. Right now has 986 passing yards, 462 rushing, totaling up for 1,448 yards doing a great job this season. No, we're excited to see him play, see what they do here. Another shotgun snap. Williams will hold on to himself, dealing with pressure, and he's taken down in the backfield for a loss of about three and a half or four yards. They're going to say forward progress only brought him for a, a two-yard loss. So it will be second down and 12, not the start that the dynamic quarterback was hoping for. No, for sure. We'll probably see him... We'll probably see him target his wide receiver a little more coming up. Obviously, first run of the game, so not really too worried. No, he's a powerhouse. No, he's got great things to do. Williams to the right, and it's complete just at about the line of scrimmage and diving for a gain of five. Was number 13, Teron Mallard. Mallard making something out of nothing, catching that ball right at the line of scrimmage, getting... A seven-yard gain brings up a third down and five situation with Bethune-Cookman deep in their own territory. And it will be another shotgun snap for Akevius Williams. Surveying his options, forced out of the pocket, deep ball wide open, and it is caught out of bounds. Now they're going to say it did get in bounds and stepped out. So it will be a completion at the 45-yard line. And Bethune-Cookman picks up the first down. Great catch by Jonathan Thomas there. And now the referees are going to... They're going to review this to make sure that it was caught completely in bounds before that receiver stepped out. And that, is, that is a huge play for Bethune-Cookman. And to keep in mind, that ruling on the field is a completed pass, so there has to be indisputable evidence for that play to be overturned. From my point of view, it looked like he definitely did have that foot down. We uh, definitely going to be a big start for the Bethune-Cookman offense. We are really hoping, you know, that they can get going and give us some really good offensive looks here. The referee's taking a good, hard look at this one. This is a big play. This would bring up a fourth down punting situation for the Wildcats if it gets overturned. So Jason Soisman in communications with the replay booth here at Daytona Stadium. I believe once the refs take a good, good look at it, they're going to see that he came down with the ball. Bethune's going to get a first down and hopefully get some, get some more plays going and score a touchdown. And a player that we haven't touched on too much today for Bethune-Cookman, let's run through the, the type of season that Jimmy Robinson has been having. He is an outstanding player for the Wildcats. And actually, just as I say that, we're going to have that ruling on the field. And the completed catch does bring up a first down. Play does not get overturned. First down at the 45-yard line for the Wildcats. I 
Wonder how they're gonna. I wonder how they're gonna come out on the field here. Definitely, you know, need some quarterback running going. But with this slippery turf, it may be a little difficult. Maybe target Jimmy Robinson a little more. The play with the tight end originally worked very well. Maybe a handoff. We'll see what happens. Jimmy Robinson in the slot on the left. Isaac Washington, the running back. He'll get the handoff. Washington breaks through, gets the first down, picks up a couple extra yards all the way to the looks like the 31-yard line. A huge gain on the run from Isaac Washington. Five foot nine hundred eighty pound sophomore sophomore running well above his height right there. That's for sure. The way the offensive line blocked there was absolutely fantastic. Gave him perfect gaps to run through. We're gonna get another handoff here to him. And he, he gets... will be taken down for just about a gain of a yard, if that. Good play from the Bulldog defense to stop that run, not allowing huge back to back gains. So it'll bring second down and nine. Now Bethune-Cookman with their chance to get into scoring range. Three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right of Akevius Williams. And again, Isaac Washington in the backfield. Shotgun snap handoff is faked, and a centering toss is caught right there. Got a flag on the field. And now lots of confusion on the field. Play was blown dead. But South Carolina is actually calling for a turnover, saying they have the ball. At the same time, Jablonski Green came out of that pile with the ball. But as you said, Chase, flag on the play. The Bethune-Cookman runner may have been down. That was, again, Teron Mallard who got that reception. So a first down on the holding penalty negates everything. And it will actually bring up a first down for the Wildcats. And now they are threatening in scoring territory at the 21-yard line. With a fresh set of downs nonetheless. Definitely a lot of potential on this drive. We're going to see Jimmy Robinson line up there in that same position again. May have a false start. Don't really see what happened there. I don't see any laundry on the field. There may have been an official's timeout. Doesn't look like they have the yardage markers set up properly before that snap even happened. So Bethune-Cookman will get away with that false start due to the fact that the officials were not ready on that far side of the field. But again, as I alluded to earlier, talk us through the kind of talent that Jimmy Robinson brings to this Wildcat team. Fast, athletic receiver, definitely a huge, huge player to have on that side of the ball. And we're definitely going to look for a lot out of him today. He... First and 10 from the 20-yard line for Bethune-Cookman in threatening territory. As the officials get out of the way, Akevius Williams in the shotgun. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. And the handoff will be completed and taken down for a gain of two. Again, Isaac Washington definitely getting a heavy workout load here in the early goings. That's for sure. If the offensive line keeps blocking like that and he keeps breaking free, he's definitely going to be a factor in today's game. Brings up second down and eight. Williams, and that pass is deflected. The intended target, Marcus Riley. Brings up third down and eight. This will be from the 19-yard line. Almost the exact same position that the Bulldogs were in when they turned over on downs. Kevius Williams directing traffic, hangs on to the ball himself, moves right, passes in the air and incomplete, and it will bring up a fourth down. And just as we saw the Bulldogs. Great coverage there on Jonathan Thomas again. Second time he's been targeted today. Definitely looking for some stuff from him. 
And unlike the Bulldogs went for that fourth down conversion, Xavier McDonald will come out for the field goal try. This would be the first score of the game. We are scoreless through this first quarter. And this one may have been blocked. It gets through the end zone. And obviously no good. So we will head into this last seven minutes of the first quarter scoreless here on the ESPN3 MEAC Digital Network. And instead, we will hang on tight for a first down from that 19-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 20 after that failed field goal attempt from Xavier McDonald. And running out with him himself is Tyrese Nick. Picks up a seven-yard gain, and it will be second and three. So one drive for both teams, both of them resulting in a turnover on downs. We, we, we remain scoreless. Now Tyreek Nick throws it to his left in a stiff arm. We'll get a first down for the Bulldogs. That is number 84, Rodriguez Thomas, picking up that gain for South Carolina State. Seem to be liking this no-huddle offense here. Nick in the shotgun completes the handoff, and breaking through traffic is LeBron Morris. Has to be taken down again for another first down. South Carolina making quick work of the Bethune-Cookman defense right now. As the skies begin to clear, weather gets more and more beautiful. Crowd begins to file in on the sellout homecoming game. Nick on the shotgun, sends it to the near side, bouncing off a couple of tackles is Traquan DuBose filling in for Wilverine. And now the offense begins to slow down as Tyrese Nick looks to the sideline for direction. Sets up in the shotgun, receives the snap, looks to his left. Throws it in the air right down the middle of the field, and that one's going to be an incomplete pass too far in front of Rodriguez Thomas. Brings up third down and two. Nick, uh, how do you feel about um, Traquan DuBose coming into the game? How do you think he's going to do? A last-minute decision for Tra for Traquan DuBose to come in. We only got notified right before we got on air that Will Vereen would not be in the match. I assume he had to know before the bus ride. So we'll see what his mindset is like. And this one's complete. And this is going to go all the way. And South Carolina stayed in for the touchdown. Demontrez Burrows on the completion just as Corey Fields got rocked in the backfield. And this may come all the way back. We, we have some flags on the field. Corey Fields got. And this one does come all the way back. Pass interference on the offense negates the first scoring play of the game. And that'll bring the ball all the way back to South Carolina State's end of the field. At the 47-yard line, third and long. The thin cooking the defense has definitely shown up today, putting great coverage on Traquante Bose. I believe he's only been targeted twice, and we're seeing some good lockdown defense from Bethune here. Definitely, uh, definitely looking for some more. Corey Fields in at quarterback, a revolving door between him and Tyrese Nick at quarterback. And another deep ball thrown by Fields goes to the left sideline well out of bounds, brings up fourth down and long. And that will most likely bring out Cliff Benjamin to punt it away. 
And we will see number 84, Tyrese Spain, back at about the 20-yard line for Bethune-Cookman, retreating all the way back to about the 15. Speaking of Bethune getting back on offense, you know Jimmy Robinson actually enters this game averaging 2.31 points every time he has touched the ball in the last two games, meaning 30 points on 13 touches. Oh, it's a fake. And it's a fake all the way to the left. And he will get to the line of scrimmage. And he will dive for the first down. South Carolina State picks up the first down at the 35-yard line. What a run. I believe that was number 16, Cliff Benjamin. No, that was number 45. That is Cliff Benjamin. Put the Jets on for that one there. Great run by Cliff. And my apologies. I have Cliff Benjamin as a number 16 on one of my stat sheets. That was number 45, Cliff Benjamin, picking up a first down on the fake. And back in at quarterback is Tyrese Nick, picking up a five-yard gain on a miraculous set of brand-new downs. Seems Seems like that 15-yard penalty didn't put him back too far, huh? All the way to the 30-yard line for second and five. Back to Corey Fields. He'll have the handoff and stumbling for a gain of four. Brings up third and nine is again LeBron Morris. Seems like both teams are focusing on the running game today. Obviously, you've seen the quarterback for South Carolina State go for a couple deep balls, but they are really running hard today. It is uh, definitely great blocking by both offensive linemen for both teams, and go, I think rushing is going to be our main focus here today. Corey Fields under center. Third down and one. Handoff again, and they will get the first down one more time. LeBron Morris earning his paycheck tonight. And it will bring up a fresh set of downs at the 24-yard line. After a fake punt and a first down run from Cliff Benjamin, the fake punt puts South Carolina State in scoring position. Corey Fields in the backfield again. Handoff will be taken for a gain of five yards again. I believe that was Omar Cummings. I believe that's the first time we've seen him in this game. And South Carolina State doing a good job of picking up yards on the turf despite the weather rolling through. And now back into the game comes Tyrese Nick. He and Corey Fields sharing the field a lot here in this first quarter that has only about two minutes and 40 seconds left in it. Play clock at 15. Got an offside there. Nick looks to his left. This should be a free play. And an incomplete pass is called. As you said, we may have an offside call. Offside. Tony Bowman. Guilty of offside. And we will replay second down and about half a yard. Brings it all the way to the 15. South Carolina threatening again. Tyrese Nick hangs on to it. Shuffles to his right. Trying to get to the sideline. Can't do so. But he dives forward enough for a fresh set of downs. First down for the Bulldogs again. That turf is definitely going to be a factor. You see, he slipped yet again running. He's been doing a great job of keeping his balance, but that turf is a big, big factor today. Even though we've got the sun back out, may have time for the field drive before halftime, but definitely going to be a factor. Corey Fields again at quarterback for the Bulldogs. He'll take a shotgun snap, hangs on to it. In the pocket, looks to his right, goes over the center, and the diving catch was unsuccessful from Demontrez Burroughs. Second down and 10. I really like this tandem quarterback offense that they're running. It's definitely working. Bethune 
has been very solid so far, but having very little answers on this drive. Coming down to one minute and 46 seconds left in this opening quarter. Second down and 10. Corey Fields again with a shotgun snap. It will have Omar Cummings to his right. Trying to draw him off sides there. Play clock at six. Time winding down to get this snap off. And Fields gets that snap just in time, looks to the right. Here's Cummings working down to the five-yard line. Stumbles and stays in play. Not enough for a first down. And they mark it at the four, just shy of that first down marker. Here we see Tyrese Nick coming in again. I really liked that wheel route on that last play. Opened up the coverage for him there on the right, and got him a got him a pretty good yard, got him a pretty good gain of yardage. Now Tyrese Nick receiving direction from his sideline, and he will relay the message to the O line. Tyrese Nick not happy with the play call. Looks like he's going under center. Has Cummings in the backfield, hands it off to him. And they are just shy of the goal line. Bethune-Cookman defense doing a good job of stopping that right at the one-yard line. But that will bring up a second down and goal at the one-yard line. Big test for the Cookman defense. Tyrese Nick will stay in. Cummings on his left. Nick from the shotgun at the five. Hands it off to Cummings. And he may have been stopped just shy of the goal line. And he is. Brings up third down. Great job by the Cookman defense again. Great stop there by Antonio Anderson. And Cummings will be replaced by LeBron Morris at running back. Tyrese Nick will stay in. Again. Third down and goal from just inside the one-yard line. Morris to the left of Nick. Nick holds on to it himself, and he dives for the touchdown. And South Carolina State has the opening lead of this game. Just as this first quarter begins to expire. Dodge right there. Fantastic play. Fantastic. Play. Great blocking by the O-line. Couldn't ask for any more from him. And Dylan Bredesen will come out for the PAT. Let's see. You think they'll fake this one? You never know at this point. It is up, and it will be a good extra point. So a 7 nothing lead for the Bulldogs. At the end of the first quarter. So no score from Bethune Cook. From Clemens allowed South Carolina State to get into that scoring position. At the end of the first quarter, South Carolina State 7, Bethune Cookman 0. We're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. Back for the start of the second quarter, South Carolina State leading by a score of seven to nothing. Jimmy Robinson back to receive this kickoff, has to go all the way to his right, and he will play it down the right sideline, cuts back to the middle, gets through traffic, it, and Robinson has a chance, but he stumbles and taken down at about the 38-yard line. Fantastic blocking there by the kick team. That was Absolutely awesome. Hope to see some more of that from them. And when we come back, it will be a first down and 10 for Bethune-Cookman trying to get back even against South Carolina State. Cast. After a pickup of about 35 yards on the return from Jimmy Robinson, it's a first and 10 for the Wildcats from about the 37-yard line. Akevius Williams will hand it off, and it was given right there to Quayshawn Bird, his first action of the match. 
Great tackle by linebacker John L. Brown there. Definitely broke out on the outside and got him pretty well. He was tackled for a loss at second down and 11. Akevius Williams again in the shotgun. Bird to his left. Bird trying to break through a couple of tackles. Does so. Gets a short gain. And will bring up third down and six. And Nick, the last time that BCU was 6-1 and one was when Florida State won their national championship under James Winston. Looking for a great start here, great win on homecoming. Hopefully we'll see that from them. The crowd has definitely filled out. We were worried that people would be deterred by the weather. Williams will hang on to it, flushed out of the pocket to the right, pump fakes, looking for an option, and it's complete at about the 43-yard line first down Wildcats. Fantastic throw there. You know, they preach don't throw cross body, don't throw cross body, but in that situation he had to, made the best out of a bad situation. And again, three receivers to the left, one receiver to the right of Williams. He will hand it off to Bird. Quayshawn Bird stumbling for about an eight-yard gain. They will mark him at the 37. Starting at the 37, hopefully we'll see a, some, more, some more running from both sides, honestly. Passing game hasn't really been there, but. Akevius Williams again in the shotgun. Now three receivers to the right. Williams hangs on to it. Pass is caught tremendously. That was Stefan Franco again. That is his second reception of this drive, and that one in spectacular fashion. That's for sure. Great turn and catch by him. You see, they're, they really like this quick offense here. They're moving down the field fast. They're trying to get into the no huddle. It's been working somewhat. Obviously, almost got sacked there back at about the 45. And But it, other than that, it's been working great. Quayshawn Bird now to the left of Williams. Williams hangs on to it, flushed out of the pocket again, moves right up field, hangs on to it, and he will get inside the 10 and tackled at the five yard line. Big gain for the Wildcats, brings up first and goal. Fantastic run there. Like I said earlier, he, I believe he has right around 462 yards rushing on the season. He's just racking up that number tonight. See where Akevius William goes to try to get this game tied up. Hands it off to Quayshawn Bird, and he's snuffed out for about a three-yard gain. Akevius Williams actually just tied the number number six with Eric Weems for most rushing touchdowns in Bethune Cookman history. So maybe he'll maybe he'll pass up into number six tonight. We'll see what happens. Now Ladarian Wilson to the right of Akevius Williams. Williams hangs on to it. Lots of flags okay. in the air. Jimmy Robinson goes up for it, but it's incomplete nonetheless. And we'll see what the laundry is for. I believe we're going to have a false start here. Roderick Perry guilty of offsides for South Carolina State. Remains second down and goal. Akevius Williams again directing traffic from the shotgun. Jimmy Robinson to the left on man-on-man -on -man coverage. If I'm South Carolina State, I'm not giving him benefit of a one-on-one -on -one coverage, but the handoff goes to Ladarian Wilson, and he hauls it in for a touchdown and a tying score. So barring a point after try, Bethune-Cookman will pull even here in this second quarter to the the Bulldogs. Ooh, that's the first time we've seen him on the field tonight. That's nice, you know, come in, score your touchdown, get back off, put the load back on your other backs. Xavier McDonald for the PAT. And that one's blocked again. 
And so it is a 7-6 lead for South Carolina after that blocked PAT. 7-6 lead for South Carolina. When Johnny. Seven to six lead for South Carolina because of this. It was blocked off of the foot of Xavier McDonald. That is his second kicking attempt that has been blocked by the Bulldogs. And South Carolina will hang on to a seven to six lead on the slimmest of margins. And this will be a returnable ball. And that is a close play right there. That may be a safety. Juan Moody tried to come out of the end zone, thought better of it, took a knee, but it's up to the officials to determine where that knee was taken down, whether it was brought back behind the goal line or if he took a knee at the one yard line. Once you break the plane at the end zone on a return, if even, rather, no matter whether you take a knee or not, it's a safety. As long as you break it, even if you're leaning back in the end zone, it should be a safety. And when we come back, it looks like it's going to be South Carolina State University first down. And instead, we will have the first down commence immediately at the half yard line. So they are going to say that Moody stepped out of the end zone. High snap in the end zone, bobbled, and it's, and it's carried out. Shrugging off a hit is LeBron Morris gets out of bounds at the 35 yard line. And a flag is thrown late, I believe. It's going to be Trevor Merritt, the safety, who's going to get an unsportsmanlike penalty for a late hit out of bounds. But that was a crazy sequence from the half yard line, a bobbled snap. And LeBron Morris took it all the way to the 35. Ontario Johnson almost had him there, and then he just he made one small movement and broke loose, and there was nothing you could do. And after that extra yardage from the penalty comes all the way out to the 49 yard line after what looked like was going to be a sure safety for the Bethune Cookman defense. Another high snap handled by Tyrese Nick and this handoff goes nowhere except for about a yard of gain. Again Omar Cummings on the handle. Great defense there. Tyrese Nick, again, directing traffic. Has Cummings in the backfield, hard snap, does not commence. And Nick will look for direction from the sideline again. Retreats to a shotgun, hangs on to it. Looks for a deep ball on the right sideline, and it's incomplete off of the hands. And so we'll do it all the way back again. Great coverage there by Jaden Brunson. Stayed on him, stuck on him, did the best he could to keep that from happening. He broke loose on him at one point, but then he caught right back up and made a great play on the ball. Shaquan Davis, the intended target on that near completion. He got a hand on it, just couldn't haul it in. So third down and eight for the Bulldogs from the 49 yard line of Bethune Cookman's territory. And this one goes off the hands again of Demontres Burroughs this time. Came out of the hands of Corey Fields at quarterback, brings up fourth down from the 49 yard line. And as we've seen before, South Carolina State not afraid to have a little trickery on their punting team. We'll see if it happens again this time. Well, this is a big game. Like I said before, they're fighting for a spot in the Celebration Bowl, which is one of the bigger stages in Moab. And we, you know, you got to go into your bag of tricks for this one, especially with a team with the greatest defense of Bethune Cookman. Spain is back to receive this punt. He will play it from about the 10 yard line, shrugs off a hit, and will be taken down at the 23 yard line.
Tyree Spain coming off of a great punt return here. Broke through the defenders. A little bit of a horse power penalty, but no flag was thrown. Good to see Bethune put them back on offense here. Gonna hope for a great drive from them. It will be first down and 10 from the 24 yard line for the Wildcats. Williams in the shotgun again. Hangs on to it in the pocket, throws to the left, complete for a first down. That was Daryl Powell Jr. Getting the gain of 16 yards to the 40 yard line. Quick first down for the home team. Yeah, with this no huddle offense, they're coming in very fast, very quick, trying to fool the defense, and they're doing a great job of it as of right now. Williams again to throw, and it's complete again for another first down. Jonathan Thomas this time with the reception. All the way into South Carolina territory, 47 yard line. See, great throw there, great catch, split the defenders, did a great job. And no gain on that run by number 24. Excuse me, that's a 34, Isaac Washington. South Carolina always has to keep an eye on Jimmy Robinson, rotates to the left side. I believe we're going to see Kalen Humphrey come into the game for the first time too today. Number 88, keep an eye on him. Williams throw to the left, and it's nearly picked off by South Carolina. Number 51, Josh Pringle, nearly had the first interception of the game. Again, Jimmy Robinson, that intended target, so the Bulldogs doing a good job of keeping Jimmy Robinson corralled. Isaac Washington again in the backfield behind. And he will move to the right on the line of scrimmage. Williams to the left. Robinson was harassed from behind. He wants a flag. He's not going to get it. And it brings up fourth down and 10. Huge pressure there. Great job. Great focus by the quarterback, though. Tried to get that pass off, but his offensive line just crumbled under him. There wasn't much he could do. And Bryce Coward will lead the punt team onto the field for Cookman. And it looks like Demontrez Burroughs will be back to receive the punt. And again, we've already seen some trickery on the punting teams from South Carolina. We'll see what Coward has to offer. He will send it with the left leg. And it's taken, bobbled, and loose ball is picked up at the 21-yard line on a sliding Demontrez Burroughs. Came really close to being blocked there. Bethune-Cookman unsuccessful in their drive. South Carolina State will have it at the 21-yard line when we come back to the meet. First and 10 for South Carolina State. They lead seven to six after the botched punt return from Demontres Burroughs picked up possession. And the handoff will get a five yard gain into the hands of LeBron Morris again. LeBron Morris has just done a fantastic job today. We're gonna see some more out of him for sure. Corey Fields in at quarterback for the Bulldogs. He has a revolving door with Tyrese Nick. Just about eight minutes left here in this second half, or excuse me, this first half, the second quarter. Bethune-Cookman with their own touchdown, but a blocked PAT keeps South Carolina State ahead by a score of seven to six in this tight game. Brings up third down and two is the official spot at the 29 yard line. Keep an eye on Jaquan Davis. We didn't talk about him much before the game, but he's actually leading the Bulldogs in receiving yards right now. 
And that goes right through the hands of Shaquan Davis. A good throw from Corey Fields to the back shoulder. And a quick three and out for the Bulldogs. A lot of pressure on the quarterback there. There was not a lot he could do. Tyree Spain again to receive this punt for Bethune-Cookman. Sets up shop at about the 35-yard line in his own end. Cliff Benjamin to punt for the Bulldogs. Benjamin with the left foot sends it sailing, and this is going to come all the way back. A good punt. And a false start on Bruce Johnson for South Carolina. We'll send the punt team back a couple of yards. And that's a shame because that was a phenomenal punt from Cliff Benjamin. That would have sent Bethune-Cookman all the way back to their own 15-yard line for Spain to recover. Instead, we got to do it all over again. Again with the left foot. And Spain will take it at the 33-yard line. Has space down the right side. Runs into a, a two-man coverage. And will stumble at the 48-yard line. It will be Bethune-Cookman ball in South Carolina territory. 7-6, to six, South Carolina leads. Bethune Cookman with possession, a first and 10 in enemy territory at the 47 yard line. They trail 7 to 6 to the Bulldogs. Williams will hang on to it, sends it to the near sideline, and an incomplete pass as the ball squeaks out. Just out of the hands of Marcus Riley, moving to a wide receiver position. Another thing we haven't really got to touch on today, Jonathan Thomas, who has done a fantastic job picking up some of the slack for Jimmy Robinson, who hasn't performed a lot, trying his best, but getting you know swallowed up by the secondary. Second and 10 on the incompletion. Williams has to shovel it out. Finds Quayshawn Bird down the right sideline. Cuts back into the middle. Evades a tackle. Moves to the left sideline. Gets a block from Robinson. And Quayshawn Bird takes it to the house. Touchdown Wildcats. Great, blo great blocking and a fantastic run there by Quayshawn Bird. As you can see, quarterback gets pressured. Fakes the handoff, beautiful, right to him. Comes back up, gets to about the 40, begins his cut back across the field right around the 30, just breaks loose, gets a really good block here, and just goes all the way to the house. You see the excitement from Quayshawn Bird in a packed stadium. And this one on his third attempt, finally, Xavier McDonald finds the uprights. 13 to seven is the lead for Bethune-Cookman over South Carolina State University after a phenomenal 47-yard run after a completed pass for Mckevious Williams. All of this with 6.55 left in this second half. If you look here, just look at the amount of pressure put on the quarterback and then back to the running back. Again, begins his cut at 30, just sees nothing but daylight. All the way up into the end zone. Fantastic blocking, fantastic job by the back. One more time, I apologize here. 6.55 left in the second quarter, and we will go straight into the kickoff. Juan Moody back to receive. And the last time this happened... Moody stepped into the end zone to recover the kickoff, stepped out, and forced South Carolina on the one-yard line. Let's see how Bryce Coward handles this one. And he will send this out of bounds, and that's going to be a flag on, excuse me, Xavier McDonald on that kick. It 
looks like they are going to place this ball all the way at the 35 yard line for that kickoff going out of bounds on the shank from Xavier McDonald. As you can see from before, Bethune is definitely using all of their running backs today, all of them averaging almost over 10, and just a huge attack from the run game today by both teams. Corey Fields at quarterback. He will hang on to it, sweeps to the right, takes a check, diving for the 40-yard line, and that's going to be a flag against Bethune-Cookman as Corey Fields gave himself up for the quarterback slide. And this may well turn into a first down. Takes a slide there. I really do not think that number 24, I believe that's Sam Mark there, that wasn't intentional. I don't see, you know, why. I mean, I understand why there's a flag. Don't really see the purpose of it there. And that is going to bring us all the way to Bethune-Cookman's 45-yard line. So South Carolina will enter enemy territory on that play. And as you said, may not have been intentional, but that is a play that Sam Mark has to make. These are two quarterbacks for South Carolina that love to run the ball. And if at some point you start letting up on those tackles, they're just going to blow right by you. That's for sure. That's for sure. Corey Fields from the pocket sends a completed pass to Burroughs, and he has his own touchdown. And that will tie the game at 13. Demontrez Burroughs after a beautiful completion from Corey Fields. Beautiful blocking by the O-line. You even see running back Rashawn Bird step up and make a fantastic block over on his right side. Just jogs in for the touchdown. A 45-yard completion for the equalizer. Let's see, maybe Bethune will have a block of their own here. Keep the game tied. Dylan Bredesen for the PAT. We're tied at 13. Bobbled the, the snap, and it will stay tied at 13. A horrific snap went right on the turf to the holder. And then we will go into this break tied 13 to 13 with six and a half. We take a look at it. That ball just skittered along the turf right into the hands of Rodriguez Thomas. Sun's been out for a while now, but you see that ball could have been slippery and just mishandled. Definitely a bad snap. And so tied at 13, 627 left here in the second half. Jimmy Robinson will be back to receive this kick. Reese Micken at quarterback. Omar Cummings in the backfield with Tyrese Nick. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Tyrese Nick hangs on to it himself, easily picks up a first down before being taken down at about the 17-yard line. Wildcats looking to regain their lead. South Carolina State really loves the QB draw. It's worked very well, especially with these tandem quarterbacks, and looking to keep that up. As you can see, your offensive line does a great job. Bush right at the middle. Tyrese Nick with the handoff and given to LeBron Morris. Excuse me, that was Omar Cummings on that handle for a four-yard gain. Second down and six in enemy territory. South, Car South Carolina State threatening here. Final two minutes of this quarter. We have a free play here. And this one gets to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown for South Carolina State. That is Shaquan Davis in the back of the end zone. And the offside will be waved out. Brings out a 19-13 lead. Judas McKenzie there with the offsides. Definitely a big factor now, and 
Let's see what happens here on the PAT. Dylan Bredesen to kick again. The last time we had a PAT, it was a botched snap along the turf. No point was had. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. And South Carolina regains their lead by a score of 20 to 13. Still a one-score game here in the late parts of the second quarter. And Bethune-Cookman will get the ball back, and they have, will also get the ball back at the start of the second half. They won the coin toss and deferred. So we'll, we will see what Akevius Williams can do with a minute and a half of offense time. Almost blocked there. And it will be Dylan Bredesen again to send this away. 90 seconds left in the first half. 20 to 13 lead for the Bulldogs over the Wildcats. Jimmy Robinson to return. Robinson from the 11. Goes right up the gut, shimmies to his right, back to the left, right through the middle of the hash marks, taken down at the 41-yard line on a hard collision. Gets back to his feet, and Akevius Williams takes over on a first and 10 from the 41-yard line. I can see here again, as I mentioned earlier, the quickness from Jimmy Robinson. There's not much they can do about it. Even though he hasn't been a huge factor on the receiving side today for Bethune, he has been great on kick returns. So once again, from the 41-yard line in Bethune-Cookman territory, Akevius Williams will take over with Isaac Washington behind him to his left. Two receivers on either side of Williams. He'll take the shotgun snap, hangs on to it. Now he will hand it off to Washington, spins away from a tackle, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and picks up a one-yard gain. Very late QB draw there, but, or very late, excuse me, very late halfback draw there, but great job by the offensive line to realize and adjust in, in good time. And we'll get right back into it. Second and nine, Williams in the pocket. Steps up, moves to the right, and he's forced to the near side. And are they going to call? They will say that is incomplete intended for Marcus Riley. That would have been a great catch by Marcus Riley, but unfortunately he stepped out of bounds right here at, I believe, about the 45 and came back in bounds, made the diving catch, but as you can see, down incomplete. I believe we're about third and nine here with 52 seconds left. Hopefully Bethune can do something with this. I mean, they were given a minute and 30. They were given a lot of time, and with receiving the ball at halftime, hopefully they can score. Williams picks up the low snap. We have a flag on the play. Williams evading traffic, gets out of the pocket to the right, looks for an option, sends it in the middle. It's picked off, taken away by Zafir Kelly down the right sideline. He has nothing but daylight to the end zone. A pick six for the Bulldogs. There is laundry on the field. We'll have to see if it gets taken back or if it will be a penalty denied. And it will be a penalty against Bethune-Cookman. And the Bulldogs will have a pick six here in the last 35 seconds of the quarter. Well, Nate, this is going to make for an interesting second half. I was watching the other day, Andy Dalton actually threw four fourth quarter interceptions. And, you know, it could come down to that. Turnovers could be a key factor in this game. So that could have just sealed their fate and or we could have an interesting second half. Zafir Kelly with an impeccable interception runs it all the way to the house. And it's up to Dylan Bredesen, and he will send it right through the uprights. A 27-13 lead for the Bulldogs out of nowhere just in the past couple of minutes, getting 14 points up on the board. And just like that, the 6-1 and one Wildcats are on their heels. As South Carolina State, as you said, trying to make their bid for the Celebration Bowl. And again, it's going to be up to Jimmy Robinson to handle this kickoff for the Wildcats. Yeah, Nick, it's very interesting. Actually, the last time BCU was 6-1, and one, South Carolina State at home won a very bizarre game that ended with both teams scoring in the last 50 seconds. So could we see that today? 
final 35 of quarter number two. Homecoming for Bethune Cookman. And South Carolina trying to play the upset through the air, and it will be handled and taken out to the 30 yard line. And we have another flag at about the 44 yard line. We'll see how they rule this one. So that'll bring the play all the way back to about the 21 yard line after the holding penalty on the return. Final 28.6 seconds of half number one. What does Bethune-Cookman have to do in this final half minute to try to get some sort of life for the second half? Honestly, I believe they have to at least get a field goal. If, if anything, it would be great if they could score a touchdown, but a field goal at this point is a, a touchdown is realistically far out of reach, but we'll see what happens here. Williams from the shotgun has Quayshawn Bird to his left. Williams hangs on to it, retreats to the left, and forced out of bounds for a loss. That will stop the clock with 20 seconds. Again, Bethune-Cookman will receive at the start of the third quarter. So Quayshawn Bird in the backfield with Akevius Williams. With Akevius Williams, though, they have to let him throw the ball. That's only his third interception on the season. So we have to keep an eye on that because... There's just, they have to let him throw. We've got 14 seconds left on this clock on a, on a second and 13, and you're down two touchdowns to a South Carolina State, and you have to do something to be able to get down and at least get yourself a field goal, build up some momentum coming back into the second half. And an automatic first down on that face mask penalty to the Bulldogs. As you said, with 14.6 seconds left, Brings up first down, but gets Akevius Williams just that much closer to the end zone. And we will see where Williams decides to go. Two receivers on either side of him. Quayshon Bird still to his right in the backfield. From the 39-yard line of Bethune-Cookman's own end. Williams in the shotgun, hangs onto it in the pocket, steps to the right, and he will be taken down for a loss and a sack. And that will run the clock out of the remainder of the second quarter. South Carolina State Bulldogs with a rowdy end to the second quarter. They put up 14 points and gain a 27 to 13 lead over Bethune Cookman at halftime. I am, yeah. LOL, come on in. This is tech that helps you be there. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech advanced engine in its class. We're at halftime here at Daytona Stadium on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. We're going to step away for a moment, but before we do, we want you to look at one of the crown jewels of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, a place founded on faith and anchored in history, Bethune-Cookman University. Historically, black colleges and universities around the country are known for producing some of the Historically, black colleges and universities around the country are known for producing some of the best talent to come through the college ranks and on to the National Football League. What many may not know is the fact that those talented student athletes were coached by legendary coaches who not only changed their lives, but helped change the landscape of college football. The Mideastern Athletic Conference is proud to document and showcase some of these football coaching legends, including today's feature on a man who was not only a legend in the HBCU ranks, but he was the first African-American 
to coach football in the ACC. His name is Bill Hayes. I always knew that I wanted to be a football coach. I always knew that I wanted to uh, be in that environment. Being a pioneer at, at, uh, in the Atlantic Coast Conference, uh, being the first black coach at, at Wake Forest University was a pivotal moment in my life. And the thing about it for me was that I was determined that I was gonna coach at a high level. I, and so I took it very seriously because I knew uh, that I had really a whole race of people and a whole generation of coaches uh, behind me. And I know you don't make bargains with God, but I did. And I just asked him to put me in a position to have a chance to compete. And so when I got to Winston-Salem State in my first opportunity to be a head football coach, no way I'm gonna lose. No way that I'm not gonna accept and take that program to a high level. I don't have any regrets for, for the course that I took. Uh, when I decided to leave Wake Forest and, and go the HBCU route, and because I touched so many lives. I used to hang around Jake Gaither and Eddie Robinson and all those great, you know, I wish they were here today because they needed, they needed to be celebrated and they weren't. So I feel very honored and proud that, that I'm here representing black college football. And I'm representing all the giants that I had an opportunity to be around matriculating through this game of life called football. Live from Daytona Stadium here, we welcome all of you back here on the MEAC Broadcast Network here on ESPN3. Nick Gimble alongside Chase Dyson. Ch Chase, once again, thanks for being here with us, filling in on the basis of our former uh, color commentator coming down with an illness. Chase, walk us through that crazy first half that we just had. First half was definitely crazy, a little bit slow to begin with, definitely even all the way up until South Carolina State had a turnover and they scored and they just, they just, they took over the game. We're at a 27 to 13 lead right now with the second half kickoff about to begin. And we are definitely looking for an exciting second half because Bethune Cookman's defense actually was doing a great job up until that turn of events. And Bethune-Cookman won the coin toss before the game. They deferred to the second half, so they will receive the kickoff here. And a player that we have not talked much about except for these kick returns is Jimmy Robinson. That's for sure, yeah. Jimmy Robinson, again, has not been a huge factor in this game so far. But, well, on the receiving end at least, he has not been a huge factor. But on kickoff returns, on the other hand, I believe he has already a little over 80 yards return total which has put Bethune in a very great position on all of their offensive drives. And this kick goes right into a body. It looks like that's number 37, Don Johnson. Caught him by surprise. Luckily, he's able to hang on to it. A right idea from Dylan Bredesen sent that right into the body. Right into him. That was definitely bizarre. I believe it just came off of his foot wrong. Don't know what happened there. Could have been going for a squib kick. I could not tell, to be honest. As I was saying, if it was intentional, that's really smart. Keep the ball out of the hands of Jimmy Robinson. But exactly what happened here, you risk giving up stellar field position, and Bethune-Cookman's going to start this second half in enemy territory. That's for sure. 
You see, Terran Maurer just came in again. This is only the second time I've seen him on the field today. I believe he's been coming in just to kind of help throw blocks, do a good job so that number 34, Isaac Washington, can keep racking up his rush yards. He has done a fantastic job today, along with the Bethune-Cookman offensive line, and the run game has been strong from both teams. And the Wildcats are using their first timeout. Only a second into this third quarter, so they're already one timeout away. And as you just saw there, homecoming court for the Bethune-Cookman University Wildcats. Homecoming weekend here. And a sold-out Daytona Stadium to show it. And the Wildcats trying to pull back in this game. They trail by 14. That's for sure. There is a lot of game left, though. So we're really hoping, well, we're hoping from a good game standpoint that Bethune really pulls through here and scores a couple more touchdowns. Akevius Williams from the shotgun. And he will hand it off. Given to Isaac Washington, picks up about half a yard. And it will be second down and nine. Once again, a 27 to 13 lead for the Bulldogs over the Wildcats. We thank you for joining us here for this presentation of MEAC football on ESPN3. Williams again the handoff to Washington. This time he breaks through a couple of tackles all the way to the 45. They will mark him down at the 44. And an automatic first down coming on the face mask penalty. That will bring Bethune-Cookman into great field position. John L. Brown there with that penalty, who, ha who has had an awesome game today. Been, I believe he has five unassisted tackles and has been just playing a complete game. So from the 29-yard line this time, less than a minute played in quarter number three. Wildcats trail by two touchdowns again to Isaac Washington. Stops up from a tackle, but is taken down on the second effort. Four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Tackled for another loss. There we see Terry Mallard again trying to throw a good block for them, but the defensive line just swallowed them up there. They knew what was coming. And once again, we thank you for joining us here on this presentation of MEAC football, Bethune-Cookman against SC State here on ESPN3. A little bit of confusion here, it seems like. And that holdup is over there again. That first down marker pylon on the far side of the field on the Bulldogs sideline is having issues. I don't know if it's becoming untied at the bottom, which is losing that piece of tether, not allowing a, an exact 10 yard measurement. And it looks like they have got it situated well enough at least for us to get back underway. Second down and 14 for the Wildcats. Akevius Williams from the shotgun. He will hand it off again, and Washington tackled in the backfield for the second time in a row, and it will be third down and very long. Two plays in a row, Isaac Washington has nowhere to go. Bruce Johnson there, and as well as number 91, Roderick Perry, did a fantastic job of swallowing up Washington there. Williams from the pocket, steps up, hangs on to it, gets to the line of scrimmage. He's going to have to run this, and he does! Akevius Williams all the way to the seven-yard line, picks up the first down, and gets inside the ten-yard line for a first and goal. Big play from the quarterback. Fantastic run there by Akevius Williams. Like I said earlier, he actually is on track to break the rushing touchdown record. And if he gets a touchdown today, he will break it as from number six, I believe. He, um, he just has done a fantastic job running today. 
Williams again from the shotgun. First and goal. Handoff to Washington. This time breaks the plane. Gets all the way to the one-yard line. They stop him just short of the goal line. The Bulldogs do. So second down and goal from the one-yard line. Wildcats trying to get back within one score. Handoff again to Washington, and he gets nowhere except behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of one. So still third down and goal from the three-yard line. Wildcats trail by two touchdowns. Early parts of quarter number three. Akevius Williams receiving direction from the sideline. As Isaac Washington in the backfield. Three receivers to the left as well as Isaac Washington to the left of Williams in the backfield. And it will be given to Washington. And again, that offensive line of South Carolina State not giving Washington any breathing room. Xavier McDonald wants to come on the field for the field goal attempt. But Terry Sims is going to keep Bethune-Cookman in four-down territory. Three yards from the goal line. The turning point here in the third quarter. Akevius Williams from the shotgun to Washington again, and Washington does not get there. South Carolina with the turnover on downs, and the defense comes up big. That's for sure. Now the Bethune-Cookman defense has to come up strong here. You see they bobbled a safety earlier. And it, they, it was a big factor. He busted up, got to the 35. And we will come back for a South Carolina State first down from the four-yard line. 27-13. So. Get the most from your amazing new iPhone 11 Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. Eleven minutes and seven seconds left in quarter number three. South Carolina State leads by a score of twenty-seven to thirteen after the Bulldogs' defense came up huge, getting a turnover on downs below the five-yard line, keeping the Wildcats off the board, and they will start with a quick four-yard run. Again, that quarterback tandem of Corey Fields and Tyrese Nick will be in full effect, and Tyrese Nick will have the field to begin. From the nine-yard line, second and five. Tyrese Nick holds on to it, sends it to the back for Gerard Jones. Excuse me, that's Detron James. 18 instead of 13, went for the first down all the way to the 21-yard line. And a good first down pickup for the Bulldogs. There was no bobble this time. Couple drive. Oh, I say a couple drives. I apologize. La- uh, I believe it was in the near the end of the first quarter. The Bulldogs were put on the four yard line and bobbled the snap, but ended up coming all the way up to the thirty five and making a huge drive. In this case, didn't happen again. They've done a great job getting out. Now Corey Fields looking to the left, taken right back into the middle, and excuse me, Tyrese Nick stayed in, got taken down on the play. Gets right back to his feet, tackled for a loss. It will be second down and 12. Corey Fields coming back into the game now. So now Corey Fields directing traffic for the Bulldogs from the shotgun. Hangs on to it, looks to his right, has to get out of that pocket, moves to the right, looking downfield, and it's caught by Demontrez Burroughs again at the 41-yard line. Big throw by Fields and an even bigger reception by Burroughs. And Burroughs remains down on the field. See, look at the way he escapes the pocket here. Fantastic throw on the run. Even better of a catch by Demontrez Burroughs. And you see he's being taken off the field now. Best of luck for him. Hopefully we'll see him back in the game. He's been a huge factor for them. 
So for the foreseeable future, South Carolina State will be without one of their most dynamic wide receivers in Demontrez Burroughs. But South Carolina State has a first down from the 40-yard line of their own end. Tyrese Nick back in at quarterback. Has LeBron Morris behind him to his left. Nick will hand it off to Morris, breaking a couple of tackles, and will pick up a six-yard gain. Out to the 46-yard line, second and four. Just under eight and a half left in quarter number three. Bethune-Cookman trailing by a 14 after a huge end to the second quarter for South Carolina State, picking up 14 points in the final five minutes. The Bulldogs trying to play spoiler on the Wildcats' homecoming game. Tyrese Nick to the left on the screen pass. Has Rodriguez Thomas. And another first down picked up by the Bulldogs. Out to Bethune-Cookman's 46-yard line. Tyrese Nick stays in and tries to speed up on the no huddle. Demontrez Burroughs was actually leading the game in receiving yards, but keep a close eye on Shaquan Davis, who is definitely going to be catching him here in the next few receptions. He's going to be a huge target for him with Demontrez going out. Demontre, I apologize. Demontre Burroughs going out. Tyrese Nick holds on to it himself, moving to the right out of the pocket, gets the first down and a little extra before being shoved down at the 33-yard line. And another fresh set of downs for the Bulldogs. Tyrese Nick will stay in. He has LeBron Morris behind him. As Nick receives direction, he's got two receivers to his right up the field and one receiver below him. Now Tyrese Nick with the handoff to Morris. Morris taken down in the backfield. That is a huge tackle by Devin James in the backfield. Second down and five. Or excuse me, second down and 14 for the Bulldogs. As I mentioned earlier, he's had a huge game and has been a big factor on that defense. We are looking to see a lot more from him coming down into the end of the third, beginning of the fourth. Second down and 14 will bring Corey Fields back into the game. Morris remains at running back. Here's a crazy stat for you, Nick. Corey Fields and Tyrese Nick have thrown together for a combined 111 yards, while Cavius Williams by himself has thrown for 140. And here's going to be another completion to Morris, and he gets enough for the first down at the 20-yard line. So the Bulldogs trying to get ahead by 21 here. They're already ahead 14. The Wildcat defense needs a big stand-up like the Bulldog defense just had a few moments ago. It was caught in the backfield, and Morris made something out of nothing. Great pump fake and adjustment by Corey Fields there. Fields from the shotgun will stay in. Morris shifts to the left. Awesome. Handoff is to Morris, and Morris gets to the line of scrimmage and more, bringing up second down and eight to the 19-yard line. And Tyrese Nick will come in again, that quarterback tandem in full effect. Handoff there. Just, just swallowed up by Bethune-Cookman's defensive line. There was nothing the offensive line could do there. And Detron James comes in at running back behind Tyrese Nick. Four forty left in the third quarter. Second down and eight. Tyrese Nick with the handoff and snuffed out for a one yard gain is Detron James again. Again, and another tackle by Devin James, who has just been, a again, a huge part of this defense. They're, they have had no answer for him. 
Brings up third down in and seven deep in Cookman territory. Tyrese Nix still a quarterback. With the hard count trying to draw the offsides, fails to do so. And instead, that's Corey Fields at quarterback. Now Fields looking for lots of direction from the sideline. Got about two seconds to get the playoff, and they're not going to. That's going to be a delay of game against the Bulldogs. And it looks like they got the timeout called off instead. So instead of a loss, we will head to a break with South Carolina State leading by a score of 27 to 13, 343 left. South Carolina State leading by a score of 27 to 13, and they will have third down and seven after the timeout saved him from a delay of game. Corey Fields is sacked in the backfield. A huge loss for the Bulldogs. Fantastic job breaking outside by Marquise Ford. He just came around that end, and there was nothing the offensive line could do. Tried to go for somewhat of a chop block, I would say, there and just got beat. There was nothing you could do about that. And so it will be a field goal try from about the 33-yard line. We've had a few wacky field goals and PATs today. Let's see what happens here. Dylan Bredesen, oh, it's, it's fake. another fake to the right, and that is quickly snuffed out by Cookman's defense. That is a big tackle from Jamari Laguerre. And it will be Bethune-Cookman first down with three minutes left here in the third quarter. And it will be first down for the Wildcats from the 23-yard line after the failed fake field goal. Akevius Williams with Quayshawn Bird in the backfield. Williams pump fake to the right. Handles it right through center for a one-yard gain after he's hammered down to the turf. Second down and nine. Great read and hit there by John L. Brown again, who actually I noticed earlier was limping over to the sideline when we had the malfunction with the first down uh, post. Just about two and a half left in quarter number three. Bethune Cookman trailing by 14. Akevius Williams from the shotgun moves out of the pocket, sends it for Quayshawn Bird, and went right through his hands and went out of bounds regardless of whether it was a, a lateral or not. And they're going to call an incomplete pass, so it will be third down and nine. Quayshawn Bird stays at back behind Akevius Williams. Now Jimmy Robinson rotating. Well, we, because of that incomplete pass, we have to reset the time clock to 2.25, which is complete. And we're ready for third down and nine for the Wildcats. Two receivers on either side of Williams. He'll hang on to it in the pocket. Steps up and throws it to the near side. Complete for a first down and more. Here comes Stefan Franco. And he's taken out at the 48 yard line for a big game for the Wildcats. Fantastic pocket presence here by the quarterback. He steps up, he notices the open receiver. 26 tries to make a play, misses, gets about, about 25 yards up field. And now number 33, Terrence McCray, was down and came off the field, now limping. And when we come back, it will be first down and 10 from the 48. Yard line for Bethune Cookman. They trail 27 to 13. Drink of Fansville. This <laughs> guy. <laughs> 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 
First and 10 for the Wildcats from their 48-yard line in offensive territory. Akevius Williams in the shotgun. 2.09 left in quarter number three. Wildcats trail by 14, and Quayshawn Bird is tackled for a loss of one yard. There we see linebacker Chad Gilchrist make that tackle. Haven't seen much of him this game, but maybe he may be a factor leading down into the beginning of the fourth quarter. Clock continues to run in the final 145 of quarter number three. From the 49-yard line, second and 11, Akevius Williams backing up in the pocket, dealing with pressure, gets it away, and it will go out of bounds, getting away from the sack. They're going to give benefit of the doubt to Quayshawn Bird being in the area to not give an intentional grounding penalty. Remains third down and 11. And now Bethune-Cookman going with five wide receivers, no running backs. Akevius Williams, the lone player in the backfield from the shotgun. Three receivers to his left, two to the right. Williams stepping up to the left, to the 50, looking downfield, wide open and caught at the 18-yard line, all the way to below the five and a touchdown for the Wildcats. Daryl Powell Jr. gets the Wildcats within one score. 121 left in the third quarter. If you look here, he just takes one step back in the pocket, steps forward, views it, for, looks for his receivers, finds Jimmy Robinson. I, oh, I apologize, not Jimmy Robinson. That was number 85. Found him, targeted him, executed the pass, scored the touchdown. He couldn't have asked for a better drive. Daryl Powell had about half of the field to himself over there on the South Carolina sideline. And McDonald will send this one off the upright and back out. It's no good. But he caught it. That is still out of play. It does not count. It would have gone out of play off the upright. So Cookman remains down by a score of eight. 27 to 19. Xavier McDonald has had absolutely no luck tonight. It goes directly off the right upright. It is still a one possession differential. It would just require a touchdown and a two-point conversion for the Wildcats to pull back even. And we've still got 16 minutes and 21 seconds of football to be played. 121 left here in the third quarter. Now again, remind everyone, this is a huge game for both teams. Bethune-Cookman and South Carolina State both looking for a spot in the Celebration Bowl. North Carolina at a and was the team right below Bethune. And although North Carolina a and had a fantastic win against Howard today in fashion 64-6. to And even though they won that game, if Bethune-Cookman loses, they're still in the number one position, being 4-1 in the MEAC Conference. Xavier McDonald kicks this all the way to the 10-yard line, and a fair catch is called. And it will be down generously at about the 14-yard line. Again, we look at the replay. He just steps up in the pocket. Has number 84 covered. Beautiful throw. Number 23 tries to come make a play. Just can't make the tackle. Too big of a body on number 85. Jalen Barr had no chance on that play trying to get back to Daryl Powell. And this will bring the ball all the way out to the 25-yard line on the fair catch. 121 left in quarter number three. Bethune Cookman trails by eight. Bulldogs lead 27 to 19. Tyrese Nick at quarterback shovels it back for LeBron Morris, and he's taken down in the backfield for a loss of one. Second and 11 for the Bulldogs. Tyrese Nick will stay in at quarterback. Clock runs all the way down to the final 62 seconds. Under a minute left to go here. Bethune-Cookman has to make a stop on defense. If they don't, this game may be a little too far out of reach. Tyrese Nick in the shotgun. Hard snap does not draw the offside. 13 seconds still on the play clock. They've already used up one timeout to get rid of a penalty. 
And a low snap right into the midsection of Nick, and he has nowhere to go. Gets back to the initial line of scrimmage from the first down and picks up an extra yard and a half. Third down and about eight. Clock still running. As long as Bethune gets a stop here, it gets the ball started in the fourth quarter, this may not be completely out of reach. And the Bulldogs will take this all the way into the end of quarter number three. South Carolina State Bulldogs leading by a score of 27 to 19. Cookman pulls within one possession. And we will have the fourth quarter for you when we come back here for MEAC football on ESPN. Growing life can. Start of the fourth quarter here, Bethune-Cookman Wildcats hosting the SC State Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs come into Cookman's homecoming game and are leading 27-19, trying to play spoiler. Corey Fields sends a pass to the near side, but that is quickly snuffed out by Bethune-Cookman's defense. The intended target was Omar Cummings, and that'll bring up Fourth down and six for the Bulldogs. That was a great defensive play by number 21 who was, who was, doing, who was on the bluff blitz and called out directly where the pass was going to go. Great, great defensive effort by Bethune-Cookman. Potentially just put them back in this game. So again, we'll see Cliff Benjamin. We've already seen one faked punt. And Benjamin will send this away with the left foot. And stutter stepping around at the 40-yard line was Tyree Spain. Got away from three Bulldog players to get a short gain on that return. Unfortunately, you see, he almost blocking the punt, by the way. Also, when Tyree Spain gets the ball here, he breaks through the three defenders, but then runs into his own defender and just gets stopped. There wasn't much he could do there. Number 43, that is Carlton Cleofat. And just, it was difficult, got into a tight spot, and couldn't do much with it. And when we come back, it'll be Bethune-Cookman ball at the 42-yard line. They trail by eight. And a beautiful shot of the Daytona Beach shores here. Bethune-Cookman trails 27-19 to the South Carolina State Bulldogs. A beautiful morning turned into a muggy and rainy early afternoon, which has brought us clear skies and a beautiful football game as Jimmy Robinson is the target and brings it all the way down to the Bulldogs' 33-yard line for a big gain for the Wildcats. That is the first big play that is not a kick return that we've seen Jimmy Robinson make that's for sure beat the secondary there was a great move by Jimmy Robinson up the middle got outside now we see this no huddle offense again a handoff Akevius Williams with that handoff to Isaac Washington for a short gain of about three Bulldogs up 27-19 over Bethune-Cookman an eight-point lead, a still a still one-possession game. Williams, by himself in the backfield, holds it himself to the left sideline and out of bounds. Brings up third down and four. And it will be on the 27-yard line in SC State territory. Quick snap again for William. Williams. Gives it to Washington, snuffed out at the line of scrimmage, brings up fourth down. And again, it looks like Bethune-Cookman will elect for four down territory. The, the unlucky night that Xavier McDonald has had, two blocked kicks and one go off the upright, put it in the hands of your quarterback. That's for sure. I think personally they should have gone for it on the other fourth where they let him kick. We don't know what happened there. Miscommunication could have been anything. Williams with the handoff to Washington, fakes it, 
and a wide open Jimmy Robinson would have had a first down and a disappointing turnover on downs for the Wildcats. Disappointing turn of events for the Wildcats, but we have a lot of football left to play. Jimmy Robinson may have missed the catch here, but if Bethune's defense can come through, we may have a game on our hands. It almost looked like Robinson was thrown off that he was targeted by that pass. It looked like it came right to his face mask. Just couldn't get his hands on it. So SC State will take over at their own 26-yard line. Tyrese Nick back in at quarterback. All night long, we've seen Tyrese Nick and Corey Fields in a revolving door of each other coming out and in off the field. Nick fakes the handoff, comes to the right side, and he's forced out of bounds for no gain. Just about 12-20 left in the fourth and final quarter. Bulldogs up 27-19. It'll be second down and 10. Bulldogs at the 26-yard line in their own end. Tyrese Nick directing traffic at quarterback. As LeBron Morris to his right holds it. Nick to the left. It's caught for a gain of about four. Quickly snuffed out by the Wildcat defense. Great play by Ontario Johnson there. Brings up third down and, and six, it looks like, out to the 30-yard line. Tyrese Nick will stay in. Two receivers on either side. Wildcats showing blitz. Tyrese Nick nonchalantly looking over to the sideline for direction. Definitely going to have to adjust there. They're expecting the blitz at this point. And three receivers below. Adjustment from Devon Maxwell there. Moving to the right, Tyrese Nick way out of the pocket, looking for an option. And he's shoved out of bounds. Looks like he got to the line of scrimmage at the 30-yard line. So no loss, but no gain brings up fourth down. Quick four, quick four and out from Bethune Cookman's defense. That is exactly the kind of spark they needed. And that will bring out Cliff Benjamin again. Jimmy Robinson looking to make amends for his missed catch. That would have led to a first down for the Wildcats. And now we have a flag on the field. I believe it's an illegal substitution. And so officially it'll be fourth down and 11 for the punt. Don't, don't put it past South Carolina State, though. Last time on fourth and 11, they went for that fake punt and converted. So Bethune-Cookman's got to keep a close eye here because, again, they're pulling everything out of their bag to win this game. Benjamin back to punt with the left foot high in the air. Not a fantastic punt. Lands at the 45, and it takes a fortuitous bounce for the Bulldogs. Lands at the 36-yard line and touched up. I believe that actually went out of bounds back here at the 40. That's what the Wildcats are protesting. But it looks like it will be officially downed at the 36-yard line. We will be back as South Carolina State leads 27-19 to over Bethune. This engine in its class. Ten thirty left in quarter number four. Bethune Cookman trying to get back even against the SC State Bulldogs, who lead twenty-seven to nineteen. Akevius Williams flushed out of the pocket to the right. Flag on the play behind, and Akevius Williams with room to the left side, but not a lot. Picks up about a gain of two before being flushed out of bounds, and a possible holding penalty against the Wildcats. Jason Soistman with the call. And that's Camp Villalovas with that holding penalty on the Wildcats. So we'll do it all over again for a first and 20 this time around. Akevius Williams along with Quayshawn Bird. Williams looking to throw another flag on the play. 
And this one goes deflected a couple of times and through the air. And we'll check the laundry. I believe it's a holding on number 70 again. So it brings up second down and 20 after the Wildcats were guilty of an illegal shift that the Bulldogs declined. 10-03 left in quarter number four. Akevius Williams from the shotgun. Looking deep downfield, sends it. Robinson is open. And it's picked off by the Bulldogs. Another turnover against Akevius Williams. A huge defensive play from Duane Nichols. Second turnover of the day here. You see Jimmy Robinson wide open. He has one defender that adds to the defender that was on him already, picked up on him, and was just there to make the interception. Personally, I believe number 12 was holding Jimmy. We'll see how that goes. Duane Nichols was able to get that interception on an underthrown ball for Kevius Williams, put a little bit too much loft on it. Robinson had to slow down. He had the speed to get around his defenders. Instead, it turns into a first and 10 from the 19 yard, or excuse me, the 24 yard line for the Bulldogs. And they'll pick up a gain of three on the run as Corey Fields is in at quarterback for South Carolina. Again, though, as mentioned earlier, the rushing game is a huge factor right now. As of right now, South Carolina is leading the game with 213 rushing yards on 39 attempts and Bethune-Cookman is 33 of 96. So that that could be a big factor as to why Bethune's losing right now. O-line obviously not doing its job as well as it should be, and South Carolina State is just dominating the run game right now. Corey Fields with the handoff and spinning away from a couple of tackles again. LeBron Morris gets the first down at the 36-yard line. would like to mention though you see no loss of enthusiasm from this wildcat band homecoming court fans this place is packed it has been a fantastic fantastic atmosphere for both teams and you notice it it reflects on the game itself we may have had a couple of you know minor miscues from the quarterback but again we got a lot of football left to play they're down one touchdown we're we're at first and ten if they can hold them back here but Thune still has a great chance of winning this thing a big possession here, South Carolina trying to grow their lead. And it's kept by Corey Fields, and he dives out to the 44-yard line. And it will be second down and two after a big gain from the quarterback. You know what I've noticed more and more in football nowadays is the, the safeties, linebackers, they're bringing that punch back. They run around the, whoever has the ball and are physically trying to punch that ball out. If you watch any game in the NFL or even at the, D, at the D1, higher D1 level of the NCAA, you notice coaches are pushing players harder to get that punch. So when number 26, Devontae Lawrence, came around the corner there, he was punching. He wants that ball. They want that stop. Corey Fields with the handoff again, and Morris picks up yet another first down and will be right at midfield at the 50-yard line. Fresh set of downs for the Bulldogs. Seven and a half left right now. Bulldogs are just trying to eat as much clock as they can. Of course, they're trying to extend their eight-point lead. South Carolina State leads 27-19. Defense has got to lock up here. Corey Fields back in the shotgun. He will hand it off one more time to Morris. Taken down for a two-yard gain. Keeps the clock running. Under seven minutes to go. Again, win or lose for either team on a cloudy night, crazy weather day here in Daytona. A fantastic game has been played. 
and I have been honored and glad to be here as one of the commentators. Ontario Johnson was shaken up on that play, so that's why the clock stopped. And it will continue to run. It looked like the officials signaled for an injury timeout, but clock continues to run at 6.35 left in quarter number four. And that will bring in Tyrese Nick at quarterback. I believe number 92 had just lost his helmet. Was that what they were looking at, or I didn't I didn't quite see? It's possible, but with only 10 seconds left on the play clock, Tyrese Nick has to get this snap off soon. Watch the adjustment from Burroughs here. Good to see him back out on the field after being shaken up earlier in this game and taken down for a loss is Tyrese Nick. That is big number 50, Uriah Gilbert with the sack. See, he comes through right here, just grabs him, perfect, not necessarily a perfect tackle, but a perfect stop and exactly the spark they need. We've got a third and 15 right now. If Bethune-Cookman gets a stop here, again, realistically, game could be either tied in or won because at this point, kicking PATs has not gone well and as well as they're down eight. So we have to get a touchdown and a three-point conversion from BCU right here and or after this stop for them to be in this game. Quick pump, fake from Fields, and out come the Bulldogs, and they pick up the first down and a little extra. A big carry from Omar Cummings, and a big first down for the Bulldogs all the way out to the 31-yard line. That play was drawn up perfectly by the offense. They could not have passed any better than the run. You see the hesitation in the pump here, gets the ball. Blocking is fantastic. They have the whole defense locked up because everybody thought it was a pass. It, that's just how it works, and it was drawn up perfectly. Bethune-Cookman electing to hold on to their two remaining timeouts once they get the ball back. 4.47 left in this fourth quarter. Bulldogs lead 27-19. to It's held by Tyrese Nick. He picks up another first down below the 20-yard line. All the way to the 19. And South Carolina threatening again. They want to make this a two-possession game. Try to put it out of reach here and play spoiler at homecoming. Great read option here by Tyre, Tyre, not apologize, Tyrese Nick. And he got through the middle, did exactly what he was supposed to do on that play. Blocking was fantastic. And now Corey Fields in for this play at quarterback, replacing Tyrese Nick again. That revolving door at quarterback has been working for the Bulldogs. Tyrese was actually limping a little bit after that play. We don't know if that was, obviously don't know if it was just tiredness. They played a whole, they played almost a whole game. And also, he could have been hit. It seemed like he got hit in the leg. Don't know what happened there, but I believe that's why he went off the field. LeBron Morris stumbles for a gain of five. Comes to the 14-yard line. South Carolina State entering the red zone. And again, we have to think here, both teams realistically still have three timeouts because we still have a two-minute warning. There's still a two-minute warning, although both teams have two timeouts. There's still a two-minute warning left, which stops the clock, gives the team a little bit of time to regather, get their next play called, and make sure everything goes straight. And with the injury on the field, we will take one last break. 3.48 left in the fourth quarter. South Carolina State... Three forty-eight left in the fourth quarter. South Carolina State up twenty-seven to nineteen, and they have a second down and five in front of them, deep in Bethune-Cookman territory. Defense has got to lock down here. If we can get them to clamp up and do what they're supposed to do, this still could be a game. I mean, I'm the type of person that says never say never, and you got a minute left on the clock and you're down two touchdowns. You never know what could happen. So if they get a stop here, we can have a ball game. Corey Fields at quarterback for the Bulldogs. High snap, it's blocked down, and it's picked up by LeBron Morris, and he gets a gain on that play. Unbelievable how Morris was able to pick that up off the bounce after it was blocked down by Corey Fields, and that's nearly a first down. It's going to be third down and, not, and one after a four-yard pickup. Again, never say never. This is, these are things that Bethune has to lock down on. When a ball is bouncing in front of you, you have to execute. Somebody has to dive on the ball. You see on the replay, bad snap. And while, yes, there wasn't a lot of time in between, there was plenty of time to run up and punch that ball out. 
they have to execute better if they want to win this game. From the 10 yard line, Corey Fields at quarterback, or excuse me, now it's Tyrese Nick with the handoff to Morris. And he snuffed out a yard short of the first down. So it will be fourth down and one. Again, the stop Bethune was needing here. Depending on whether they come out and kick this field goal or not, could be the deciding factor to how this game ends. Under two minutes to go. And Bethune-Cookman will finally use one of their timeouts. And as we take a look at the MEAC standings in the MEAC, Bethune-Cookman is 4-0 up against South Carolina State 2-1 in conference play. Again, as mentioned earlier, North Carolina A&T had a huge win over Howard today with a 64-6 win. So although Bethune-Cookman may lose today, they will still be at the number one position going into next week. And then, of course, Florida A&M ineligible for postseason play due to academic standards. They are also 4-0 in conference play. I believe Bethune Cookman's last game is against Florida a and as a matter of fact. So, although A&M may not be eligible, we'll see who truly is deserving of the position at the end of the season. Both teams have all conference games left on their slate. Bethune Cookman is at Delaware State, at North Carolina A&T, and against Florida A&M at a neutral site in Orlando. South Carolina State looking forward to North Carolina A&T and Howard at home. And then they will finish up on the road at North Carolina Central and at Norfolk State. Let's be real, North Carolina A&T can slip up the rankings here if they win their next three games, conference games. And again here we see the offense trying to make a decision on whether to go for it or kick the field goal. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Now watch, we've noticed all game, Demontres Burroughs has made an adjustment at least every other play where he's adjusted to the other side of the field and they've run their play. This could be a QB sneak depending on what happens here besides this game. Tyrese Nick and, and a, a false start. start. They may have to elect for the field goal here if this is a false start. Delay of game called before the false start. Still fourth down, but pushes the, the Bulldogs off of that first down marker. We're going to have a fourth and six here. And it looks like Dylan Bredesen will come out for the field goal try. Bethune has to get a stop, or a, they have to get a stop here if they want to win this game. And with all the wackiness that has been going on with them, point after touchdowns, there is here. Bredesen for the field goal. About a 32-yard try. It's up in the air. It's blocked by Bethune-Cookman. Play is alive at the 35, and it's run out of play. Bethune-Cookman gets the stop that they needed. With a minute 52 left to go here, you see number 48, as mentioned earlier, Marquise Ford comes in and blocks that. He comes around the outside, coming again for the ball. They, and number 14, Terry Gilliam just runs out of bounds. There was not much they could do there, but this puts Bethune in a great position with a minute 52 left to get down the field, score a touchdown, and tie this game up. And it will be a first down from the 38-yard line after it got ran out by Quincy Hill, who was the placeholder. It was a great snap, great hold, and great kick. It was just a phenomenal defensive play from the Wildcats. That is for sure. That was the spark they needed to be able to get back in this game. Let's see what we can do. Williams to the right side. And it was taken by Jonathan Thomas on that right side. Clock continues to run at 140. Bethune-Cookman needs eight to tie. 
One timeout left for Bethune, low snap. Williams in the backfield, out of the pocket to the far side, and he will run out of bounds, stop the clock on a safe play. But now it brings up a dangerous third down and five. Bethune has to be careful not to hurry here because let's be honest, they've got one timeout. He just got out of bounds. They got to take their time. There is a possibility to take the lead, or not take the lead, I apologize, to tie this game up and potentially do something with it. So we've got to watch here. They've got to be careful not and be able to take their time and get the ball down the field. South Carolina mindset if they stop here as Akevius Williams all the way back under pressure, and he's taken down in the backfield for a huge loss, and it's going to be fourth down and long for the Wildcats, and that is what South Carolina State needed because they only have about a minute and 18 before they get the homecoming upset. And that was number 99, Darius Clark on the hit. You notice the middle linebacker shows the blitz. He busts through the middle line, misses the quarterback, and number 99 just comes outside and wails on him. Fantastic hit and, you know, very sad for Bethune, but we'll see what happens here on this fourth down. So it is fourth down and long, and this is going to be for the game. It is going to go in the hands of Akevius Williams. They mark this at the 34-yard line. I'd imagine we're going to see Jimmy Robinson here because he has to do something. He hasn't done a lot the whole game. He's got to show up and show out here if he wants to lead his team to a tie, maybe an overtime, and then eventually maybe an overtime win. The allotted time for the called timeout is over as you see what remains of that crowd is pumped up and ready to go. That was Bethune Cookman's final timeout. This is for the game. Watch Jonathan Thomas on the outside here. You see Jimmy Robinson adjusts again. Williams from the shotgun, dealing with heavy pressure, shifts to his left, looks downfield, fires for the first down. It gets out of bounds. Where do they call it? It is a catch at the 49-yard line and a first down for the Wildcats. Marcus Riley is actually limping off the field. We don't know what happened to him. It seems like he got hit pretty hard there. That was a huge play for the Wildcats to keep this game alive. Akevius Williams stepping up in the pocket, dealing with pressure. He's sacked. And the Wildcats have to get up and spike this ball if they want to stop the clock. They've got no timeouts left. Watch for a fake spike here because, again, everybody's pulling their, their tricks out of their hat. Watch for a fake spike here. Oh, no, they're going to go out of the shotgun formation. 50 seconds on a running clock. Bethune-Cookman down by eight. Williams looking over his options. He's taken down deep on the play. That is third down and tremendously long. 37 seconds, clock is still running. Macavius has got to get up and either get something going or spike this ball because they got 30 seconds that's deciding this game right now. I, I, although it's third and 17, I believe the, th the smart thing to do would be to spike this ball because there's you only have 20 seconds left. 20 seconds on a running clock. Akevius Williams from the shotgun. Hard blitz, and it's thrown in the middle for an incompletion. The intended target, Jonathan Thomas, stops the clock, brings up fourth down, 14.6 seconds left. And again, broken record, this is for the game. Different situation from about the same part of the field that they were before. They had that tremendous completion to bring up the first down. But a first down isn't going to do much here unless it's all the way at the sidelines. But by the time your receivers get downfield, clock has already run down to about five or six seconds remaining. So it is all on Akevius Williams looking downfield. Three receivers to the left, one to the right, and Akevius Williams is taken down. Turnover on down. South Carolina State is going to win this game. A big, big defensive stand-up for the Bulldogs, taking down the number one ranked in the MEAC, Bethune-Cookman Wildcats. 10.4 seconds left on the clock as the fans start to file for the exits. And South Carolina State has successfully spoiled homecoming for the Wildcats. Although they spoiled homecoming, this was a fantastic game between both teams. Obviously some minor miscues on the offense that potentially could have decided the game, but still a fantastic game by both, well, I say both quarterbacks. All three quarterbacks who were in this game played an absolutely fantastic game. And as Nick said before, that revolving door of quarterbacks 
potentially decided this game for South Carolina State. And Corey Fields in victory formation takes that final knee, runs the clock down to zero, and Bethune-Cookman will fall for the first time at home. They fall to a 6-2 and two record, and SC State will improve to a 5-2 and two record. They stay behind Bethune-Cookman in the MEAC rankings, as you said, Chase but definitely a topsy-turvy game. Lots of wacky different plays. We've seen an upright hit on a field goal try. Bethune-Cookman has had two kicks that were blocked. We've seen fakes. We've seen fumbles. We've seen interceptions. We've seen it all tonight. That's for sure. That's for sure, Nick. Honestly, man, I couldn't have asked for a better game between these two, especially in the conference game. And, you know, it's been a blast tonight. Everybody should have a great night tonight. So for Chase Dyson, I'm Nick Gimble saying good night from Daytona Beach, Florida. The final score, South Carolina comes in and spoils homecoming by a score of 27 to 19. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of MEAC Football.